Hello everyone, my name is Dimitri and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use a combination of knowledge graphs and GPT-4 AI, which also powers ChatGPT, in order to generate new ideas for your writing. You can use it for your notes uh, or if you're working on an article or a book. In fact, in this case, I'm going to use my own book as an example that I'm working on. It's almost finished, but I just need to make sure that I covered all the ideas that are important and also see if I'm miss missing anything. So in the end, you will have something like this, which is a knowledge graph where you can see all the main topics that you covered in your book, where you can also kind of slice off the layers and uh, uncover the hidden meanings that are inside, see if they correlate with your expectations and also find the blind spot. So see if you're missing anything in the book and if you should add some ideas inside. And uh, throughout this process, we will be using the built-in GPT-4 AI to analyze the content of the book. And also I will demonstrate how important it is to approach it in a modular way. So rather than uploading your file to ChatGPT and then asking it to analyze it, in fact, uh, a much better and interesting approach I find that I want to demonstrate to you today is to actually analyze it as a knowledge graph detect the main topics based on the clusters of ideas uh, that exist in that book and then use this knowledge graphs and the gaps inside to generate new ideas. So if you're interested to learn how it works, keep watching and I'll demonstrate how you can do that with your own data. So first of all, you will need to import your book into the app. The app is called Infranodus. Uh, and you can just use the text import feature and uh, then you choose the file upload and you can just upload the file with the book. Uh, I think I have it somewhere here, uh, but it can also be a PDF file. In this case, it's a text file and you just save it as a graph. And what happens here is that uh, your graph uh, is visualizing the text. So you have the text here on the left and you have the graph on the right. So here is the text of the book. It's not a very long book. And here are all the concepts that e exist in this book. And here you have uh, the main topics which are identified. And the way it works is that the nodes that have a higher influence in this discourse will be bigger on the graph. If they belong to the same topic, they will have the same color. So for example, here or there. And uh, then uh, if they are located in the same context, so if, they, if the words appear in the same context, then they will be closer to each other in the graph. So this already gives you a very clear idea of uh, the main ideas in your book. And you have a really uh, useful button here where you can switch uh, to show the high level ideas. And uh, then it uses GPT-4 AI to generate the names for those clusters which it identified, right? So then you can see very clearly, very quickly, what the book is about. And you'll say it's my book, so I know what it's about. But what's very interesting here is that you can actually get like a, an external perspective on the content of this book, which is really interesting because you can verify if you're actually covering all the topics that you wanted to cover. So this is a really useful uh, feature to have to understand actually, like if you're writing about the stuff that you consider important and also to see if you're missing anything, right? So here you can actually see all the topics it identified and click through them to see if, if you covered all the subjects that are important. And the next step, what you can do, which is really useful, is to start slicing off the layers of meaning uh, and get to the deeper subject. So revealing the underlying ideas. You have the button for it here. This is the same button also here. What it does is that it actually takes the main terms, like in this case, it's scale, pattern, and variability. This is what the book is about. And then it hides them from the graph. So if I click here, it's going to hide them from the graph. And then the new uh, concepts emerge because the main ones are hidden that show you what are the other topics that are important. And then if you click here, then you can generate new high level ideas using GPT-4 AI. So for example, if you look at the previous graph, you will see that the main topics were scale constructing, pattern disruption, dynamic variability, and peripheral emergence, which kind of makes sense for me. And I know that the book is about that, right? So I know that on the main level, I covered all the most important subjects for me, but then when I click here and I remove the most influential notes, 
then I can see what are the other topics hiding underneath, right? So here uh, we have action construct, which relates to how you can practically implement things into reality. Uh, periphery once again comes up, um, reaching the limit or limit ordering, and we can explore this topic in a moment. I'll show you how you can do that. And investment growth, which is interesting because it's kind of like a small cluster in the book, which is talking about investment strategies based on the approach that I propose. So it's good to see that it comes up here, but I can also see that it's at the periphery and it's a good thing because uh, I don't want it to be the main part of the book, right? And here, the interesting part is like, let's say here, I don't quite understand what limit ordering is because it's the AI which generated uh, this name for this cluster based on the concepts identified inside, right? So I can either click on that button here and unfold and see what are the concepts inside and understand a little bit better myself what this is about. What I can also do is once I click on a certain element, so for example, this topic on the graph or in the analytics panel, I can click summarize visible uh, because what happens here is that uh, it filters the statements that belong to this topic or cluster. And then if I click summarize visible, it's going to use uh, the built-in AI to generate uh, a description of what uh, this topic is about, right? So then I can see that uh, it says that this book explores the natural variability of images and patterns, uh, also looks at the logic of nature, and then uh, it talks about the framework and how you can also uh, develop a system when you reach a certain limit in that system. So that sort of reminds me what this topic was about. And uh, I think it's important that it's there because I wanted this meaning to be there. So once I realize uh, where we are, I can slice off this uh, top layer and then, then get, get further to the deeper topical clusters uh, in this book, right? So as you can see, I'm removing the nodes or the concepts that I already know are inside the book and I'm asking it what's underneath. And then once again, I, I reiterate, I analyze, and then I ask what else is underneath and so on. So for example, here I see the saturation cycle, which is an extension of this idea of uh, the limits, right? So when you reach a limit, you also feel that there is saturation setting in. And how do you act in that situation when you feel that the resource uh, pool is saturated or that you reached uh, all the objectives, what do you do next? So I think that's important. And then even the representation of the book itself already gives me an idea for how I could deal with it. So for example, here I can see that I can explore the boundary. I can also disrupt the flow. So the book is talking about this subject, um, find the moment of balance. So this I can also click and uh, summarize visible to see what this specific topic is about. And by the way, I could also do it manually if I just uh, look at all the statements from the book that belong to this, this topic. But here I can see that it's talking about the need to find a new particle to begin with and to create growth. So some kind of idea of how you can uh, uh, go through saturation by uh, instead of pushing through, looking back and trying to find new opportunities inside. So uh, there I understand, okay, we have the subject covered. Uh, it's good that it's there. I can slice off the top layer and move on. And there, what is going to start happening is uh, I'm going to find more and more specific and distinct topics, which are not so evident to me, right? So for example, I will see that there is something about crisis phasing. So let's see here, it's crisis saturation. I can also click on the nodes in the graph, by the way, and see in which context they're used. So here I see that I have this scheme uh, that shows how, how you can go through this natural process of growth and saturation and crisis and revolution. But I only have one statement about that, uh, which is maybe not corresponding to my expectations because I would like to write more about it, uh, of how you deal with the crisis. So what I can do here is I go into project notes and then I can add an idea. I can say that I identified a topic called crisis phasing. And uh, I can write a note to myself, uh, write more about the different stages of the crisis and uh, how you can go out from it based 
on looking for new opportunities instead of pushing through saturated environment. So I save this here, clicking save button here, and then it's going to be saved in my notes. I can also make this graph favorite. So I remember that, uh, you know, that I was working on that graph and I found something important inside. And then I can reiterate and uh, deselect and kind of sl slice off the layer again and move on and let Infranodus generate those topical clusters, which will then be sent to uh, GPT-4 to generate some uh, descriptions for what these clusters are about. And that gives me step-by-step uh, -step a representation of what the whole text is about. And then uh, I compare uh, this representation to my own expectations and see if I'm missing anything, if there are any ideas that I can elaborate on and if there are any uh, also new connections that I can make. And here I think it's important to kind of make a little detour and demonstrate how it's different from uh, using ChatGPT. So if I upload that same book in ChatGPT, uh, here I'm using GPT-4, and I say, uh, tell me, or like, give me the main topics in this book as a list, right? So what's gonna happen here with ChatGPT is that it's going to slowly, basically read the whole book, and then uh, it's just giving me the content, uh, so all the main chapters which are inside the book. And then, of course, I can play with the prompt and, uh, you know, try to tell it, uh, don't uh, tell me the chapters, but identify the main topics that uh, reoccur in the book. So maybe here, through another iteration, you see now it says I'm reading the documents, takes some time, and then here it comes up with something a little bit closer. Variability states, patterns and their dynamics, ecological variability framework, decentralization, disruption and transformation. So here it's getting better, but it's slower. We have to wait. I hope it's not boring for you. Uh, we wait, we get to some main topics, and basically then I can say like, okay, I understand that these are the main topics that you found in my book, but for example, uh, what is underneath these topics? Let's see if it can do the same thing. I don't know, because I haven't yet tried to go uh, that deep with it, so let's see. And here it just starts to kind of reiterate the same ideas, right? Because here it says ecological variability, here it says the same thing. So then it starts going into loops. And this is where it loses us, because if we just want a general overview with some prompting, uh, it'll take you longer than with Infranodus, but you will get an idea of what the main topics are. But once you start digging and you want it to generate some ideas which are not so evident, some latent, subjects that exist in your book, then it becomes difficult because uh, the length of the context increases, it's not so precise, uh, and as you probably know, ChatGPT is great for general stuff, but if you want something specific, you have to sort of like uh, prime it in a different way, and that takes time and effort, and it's not a very trivial task. Whereas in Infranodus, you just have one button that you click, it slices off the top layer of topics, it identifies the clusters by itself, and then it sends those clusters to GPT-4 to generate uh, the names for them and to deliver you the insights in this kind of granular way where you work with them step by step and then you can go into these subjects separately. So you cannot really do this easily with ChatGPT, but here you can choose, okay, balance optimization, great. What is it talking about? So you can just look at the part of the text which is talking about balance optimization, or you can also ask it to uh, generate for you like a summarization of this topic, or you can even uh, ask it to paraphrase uh, the, the selected topic. And then when it's paraphrasing it, what happens is that it imagines what this cluster could be about. So this is really great for generating ideas. And 
let's get into this a little bit more into not only how we can have an overview, which which is this so far, but how we can also generate new ideas using the same approach. So what I normally recommend is actually to start generating ideas from the full graph. So you get all the words that you are hiding from the graph back into it. And then you start from looking at the topical diversity because what you want this measure to be is in the optimal state. And what does it mean is that your discourse is diverse enough that the system can identify uh, specific topics inside, right? So these are the topics. They're quite separate from one another. You can also see on the graph, one is on the right, one is on the left. It means that the terms or the concepts used in this topic, they're quite distinct from the ones used here, for instance. If you can see, they're kind of separate from it one another, right? And then you have also this one on one side of the graph, this one more in the center, and then you have more specific ones here and so on. So if you have topical diversity at the optimal range, it means that uh, you're ready to analyze the gaps between those topics because those gaps are meaningful. Sometimes you have situations where it's biased or focus. It means that one concept takes too much attention. So what you do is you hide it from the graph until you get, oh, you see now we're at the low diversity because now the terms scale and small scale take too much attention. So you would remove them and, until you reach the optimal stage again. But here at the very original structure of the graph, we already were at the optimal stage. So it means we have sufficient diversity to analyze the gaps. So this is very important. Uh, then you go to the blind spots. And what happens here is that Infranodus identifies the topics which could be better connected, but are not. Like in this case, you see we have one on peripheral emergence and one on ecological variability. So I talk about these topics in these books, but I'm not connecting them sufficiently. Uh, so what it does is that it can highlight this gap in the network. And then you can either think of the connection yourself if you know the content. So I can think what is the connection between peripheral emergency and ecological variability. And for me, it's an interesting idea because I'm writing about the importance uh, of reaching into periphery when we talk about social systems or text that it's important to explore not only what's in the center, but also what's uh, at the periphery of a structure, right? Even in this text, what we're doing by removing all the layers of meaning is that we uh, give more importance to the things uh, which are underneath, which are at the periphery of the graph, because this is where the more specific and probably more interesting ideas are hiding. Of course, some of them are not relevant, but most of the time we will get to very interesting and specific stuff that make our discourse uh, stand out from the rest. So this is this topic of peripheral emergence. But then I also talk about ecological variability. And this is an interesting part because uh, I think, okay, what is the connection of this topic to ecology? And in this case, it gives me really interesting ideas to think of how in nature it also happens that something small, something at the periphery can uh, sort of produce a mutation in a system that would enable it to try out uh, some new forms and shapes which it hasn't encountered yet. So that can be a really good approach to also use uh, in other contexts, like if we are, for example, thinking about a social network or if we're thinking about a knowledge graph and ideas and so on. So I'm going to write that down as a note. Uh, I will say that uh, connection between emerging periphery and ecology, how it works in nature and how it could be applied in social networks and uh, in cognitive networks, knowledge graphs as well. So as you see, when I'm making this sort of notes, I don't really concern myself with making them really well formed. I just kind of just jotting down some ideas. Um, I will make sure it makes they make their way into the book in a much better shape later. Right now, I just want to think fast and uh, to just brainstorm, right? So here, if I don't want to think myself of the connection, some people like to have a ready-made answer, which makes sense. We have not so much time in our lives. Uh, then you can click on AI inside question button. And what it does is that it sends this gap to GPT-3 or 4. It, you actually can choose uh, where it sends it. Uh, I like to use GPT-3 
because uh, it's less perfect and when you want to generate new ideas I find it's much more interesting to use the AI models which are less perfect because they make more unpredictable connections and of course you can adjust it with temperature of the model but um, I like how they work I like the results that they yield so in this case it says how does a mutation of attractor states on the periphery of dynamic card representations and you see sometimes it, it kind of makes like very strange sense but it's very interesting because if you remove some words, you get to some really interesting ideas and connections that you wouldn't think of before. So here it says, how does mutation of attractor states on the periphery of dynamic representations reflect an emerging variability of ecological intentions and how can that be used to propose and pick new multiple reflection centers? Very philosophical question, but I like uh, the direction that it makes me think of because it's a similar thought I had on my own, uh, but I see that there is also something about dynamics which is an important subject for me and I think I will save this question into notes and then I'm going to elaborate on it further when I'm thinking about the actual uh, content of the book, right? So I'm going to save it and then I can see if there are any more interesting questions that it generated. So here it says what are the reflective ecological dynamics that emerge from variability of multiple attractor states. So I like this attractor state uh, concept because I actually forgot that it was uh, an important one for me. And uh, I think it's good to uh, add it also into the graph. So I'm going to save that question as well. And then you would reiterate and move on. And what's great is if you find one question that you find interesting and you already want to work on answering that question. So for example, how does the dynamic variability of an ecological attractor influence the emergence of multiple states of reflection through mutation and intention? When, uh, okay, this we don't need. I added the question, save it to notes because uh, I like this one as well, and then I click on elaborate, and then I say GPT-4, generate, like, elaborate on this statement, give me an answer for that. So I use the AI to generate a question, and then I use it to come up with an answer. And this is a very modular way of working with AI, because normally, uh, you know, the interfaces we have right now, we kind of have to read through the text and then do this job ourselves, like I can say, okay, uh, take this topic, uh, you know, analyze and so on. So I kind of have to do it manually and I'm not sure it's going to do a good job because it's going to be primed on the original text I have. So the context now is too big and it's going to come up with very generic responses. Uh, and it's also too much for me, it's too verbose. So I have to take a lot of time to read through things, while the way that we designed Infranodus is to be very modular and short. So you can really engage into a sort of dialogue with the knowledge graph and with the ideas that are generated for you and uh, reiterate on them step by step in a really modular fashion. So here it says, how does the dynamic variability of ecological attractor influence the emergence of multiple states of reflection through mutation and intention? And here it proposes me an answer which says that uh, it introduces new patterns in the system and uh, that it also produces more diversity through deliberate change of spor or sporadic alterations. It's actually great because it's almost a sentence I would add into the book if I was not against copying and pasting AI stuff into my writing, but I will probably use a very similar idea, rephrase it, and it's going to end up in the book. So I'm going to add it into my notes uh, and uh, reiterate more. So I go back into the blind spots panel, reset highlights, and then again highlight the gap. And let's look at another gap. If there is an interesting gap where there is a big distance between the topics, um, I will take it. So let's see uh, if there is something else. Wave alignment of peripheral emergence. A really weird gap, but the weirder the better in this case. I'm going to generate a question. What is the relationship between wave levels, deviation, and opportunities to explore multiple origins of emergent attractor reflections and mutations? Interesting question. Very creative. Let's feed it back to GPT-4 and see what it has to say about that. Okay. Uh, they provide a framework for observing variabilities. So that is great because it connects uh, the first part of my book, which is about waves and the concept of waves, to the second part of the book, which is about dynamics. And this is great. Actually, I didn't think of that before, so I'm going to add it 
into my notes and make sure it's saved and so on. So basically you would approach this through uh, this workflow. You know, you look at the gaps, generate some questions, try to answer them yourself or use GPT-4, which is the same thing as ChatGPT, but just more efficient to answer those questions and then move on. And then once you reached the limit there or saturation, as we talked about before, you just remove the top layer of words from the graph by clicking this button or by choosing uh, here uh, reveal underlying ideas then it comes up with new topical clusters and then you can reiterate and see if there are any gaps between more specific topics here right so for example time space action emergent mutation investment cycle and waves great this is a much more specific approach to using uh, the notion of waves and to think about how you can apply it in investments. I think of contractive waves and economical cycles directly, but let's see what it proposes. Uh, the relationship between environmental conditions and opportunities. That can be interesting to explore. So how environment affects and how we can factor in the, uh, the analysis of our environment to see if there are any opportunities for growth. Adaptation, so like looking out for adaptations that contribute to new trajectories and economic evolution. So great, we analyze the crisis from the perspective of uh, how it affects uh, the companies or the people involved into it and how their adaptive behavior will then produce new opportunities and we try to predict these new opportunities and uh, put our attention or resources there. So I'm going to also save it into notes and move on. And basically, once I'm done with the sort of iterative approach, I'm not going to go through the whole process because it would take a long time. I would like you to try it out on your own ideas instead of following uh, my workflow. I can actually copy and paste all my notes and make a new graph here. Uh, I, yeah, I can call it final ideas. And then I just copy and paste everything I came up with so far. And boom, I have a visualization of all these new ideas that I want to integrate into my book. And I can also ask GPT-4 to generate uh, the names for those topics. I see that it's about mutation, ecological attractors, networks, investments. Great. Now I know what are the ideas I should add into my book. And I'm going to come back to this book with uh, these notions and finish it uh, knowing that I covered all the main topics that were interesting for me, but that I also emphasize those that I identified now, which are about mutation and it's important for development, making some analogies to how things work in nature, uh, the idea of attractors in ecology, networks, talk a little bit more about them and also get into a more practical realm of how you can apply it in everyday life, for example, using it for investment strategies. But I could also add some other practical examples as well. So this is how I would approach this. As you can see, uh, the main idea here is to really stay on a very modular level, right? So you start with the graph, you don't try to comprehend it all at once, you split it into these topical clusters, like we did at the beginning with the book, you see what each cluster is about, then you slice off the layers to see what are the main topics underneath, do it in a few iterations, make some notes if you have to, if you're missing a certain topic, write it down in the project notes, add it here, then once you're done, then you get back all the, all the concepts back into the graph. Then you click on the blind spots and you ask it to highlight some gaps in the structure. And then you generate ideas based on those gaps, preferably yourself if you don't have time or if you would like to get some crazy idea from AI, then you can just click on that button, AI Insight. It will look at the gap and try to generate an idea for you. You can treat it as a research question or you can also click elaborate and use GPT-4 to generate an idea for you. And then you reiterate through this process by choosing another gap and then doing the same thing. And once you reach a certain limit, then you slice off the top layer. So I'll just reset the selections, move here. Uh, and then I slice off the top layer, generate new clusters, 
go into blind spots and see if there are any new connections there. And you can really do it an uh, infinite amount of time. It's really interesting to play with it, especially if you're analyzing your own notes or ideas, because you will surely find some new interesting connections in there and uh, some new ideas inside. And also it will make you sort of like understand your own writing better. And it's especially useful if you haven't written a book for a while, so you're coming back to it after a couple of months, like I did in this case. And uh, it really helped me remind myself what are the important subjects in this book, if I covered everything I wanted, and what are the things that it's missing, and what else I can write about to make sure that it covers everything that is important to me. Try this out on infranodus.com. And also, if you like this video, please subscribe to this channel uh, so that you get informed when we release the next videos. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I will answer to all of them and I will be happy to hear about your experience using this tool. Thank you.